Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello everybody, it's Monday. I don't know what I'm so excited about because it's Monday. But anyways, my name is Heatherina and I am here to talk about living with two kids that kill or could potentially kill. Ooh, that was a mouthful this morning. So let me move this over a little bit. There we go. How has everybody been this wonderful weekend? The weekend's done, I'm so sad. But here we are. On Monday so um, those of you that joined my live thank you thank you thank you that was fun um, that was very different for me I was so nervous guys I was so nervous like I don't even know why I was just so very no nervous so if you haven't been to my um, channel yet I put my makeup on while I talk about my life um, me and my children are in the process of healing and so um, I come on here and I talk about things like kind of like a counseling session and you guys are the therapists I guess but anyways um, I come on here and I talk about my life and I put on makeup because sitting here in front of the camera and just talking I just can't do it it's not me um, so yeah I put on makeup and uh, talk to you guys so a lot of people have been asking about for me to talk about um, the little girl who's not so little anymore um, she is 16 she um, was out of the mental institution this weekend I do know that um, and uh, so a lot of you who were in my live got to see firsthand the um, complete chaos of these people they came into my live acting like complete normal they acted normal they acted like they always act um also i did get a couple messages one was on my page um and whoever you are i appreciate it thank you some other people had wrote me as well letting me know that my um, stepson had put out a video threatening my life and especially my oldest twin's life on a video. And I guess, from what I understand, they turned it into cops, the cops, and they turned it into YouTube, and it was removed. So, if that tells you kind of the hell that me and my kids lived through... If you happen to see the video um, right now they're all in victim mode they're in I'm going to turn you in I'm going to cry to whoever will listen I want this stuff removed um, I have spoke with some officials who have explained to me that because I don't show their faces and I do not say their names I am able to talk about my life and my children's life um, and they don't have any control there of course they probably don't want people knowing what they did to us and a very good representation is <laughs> I wouldn't if I treated people this way um, and then I was out there living a lie and not facing it I wouldn't want people who think that I'm normal and I don't do anything wrong to know the actual me either so you know we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that but I did have a lot of people writing on my comment section about that they were very concerned um, they sent messages they found me on social media on my Instagram and they wrote me and they're you all are very concerned and very awesome people but let me tell you um, this is how my life has been for a very long time um, it's been this way for a very long time and this is probably um so you know when you walk into relationships with other people so a lot of you got to meet my boyfriend um and you see how great he is you got to meet him on my live and if you didn't um i am doing another live on friday so come and join me again and you'll probably see him again and i'm drinking my pepsi um, I have a couple moderators that'll be in there taking care of things because 
we don't care about them. But he's great. And um, I don't remember where I was going with this. That's He protects us and he keeps us safe. Um, there was a lot of talk, I guess, on this supposed fake video about, you know, all the horrible things that we did and... You know, I, I find it very interesting because we had, um, we had CPS and everybody in our lives so often. I just wonder if all those things happen, how we got away with that. I mean, wow, we're like a super criminal, right? But anyways, um, so everybody keeps asking me uh, to talk about my ex-stepdaughter who was part of the craze in my house. Um, so if you follow me on TikTok, then you know that she poisoned me. Ooh, that looks really... <laughs> but um, she did. She poisoned me, and we're going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk a little bit about um, her as well. Um... So, as you know from some of my other stories, if you haven't watched those, please watch my other videos. Um, it will tell you a lot of things as well that I may repeat here. She came to us at five. Um, she was behind in school. She was supposed to be in kindergarten, but she did not know her... ABCs, one, two, threes, you know, she didn't know them all and stuff like that. So we had decided, um, well, they had kind of did this testing thing with her and they had figured out that it was probably easier just to go ahead and hold her back in kindergarten because a lot of students are held back in kindergarten. It's nothing that's not normal, you know, for that age. Um, so that we held her back. We decided to do, because I was already doing, I had already signed my girls up for homeschool. So we decided to go ahead and put her in homeschool as well. The boy went to regular school and I had the three girls at this time in uh, homeschool. And that purple just went everywhere, everywhere guys. So things went really good in school. She caught on to things fairly quickly. Um, all of the kids, the three, I had three five-year-olds at that time. And um, they did great. They were, it was so much fun. It was my first year of <clears throat> homeschool as well. So it was a learning curve. Um, my roommate helped me with um, all the girls we would you know sit there and they had a classroom so I had turned one of the bed uh, one of the rooms into like a classroom it wasn't like a room but into a classroom and um, yeah we had a good time she did really well and you know she had a lot of uh, anger bouts but for the most part the days were actually pretty pretty coach guys like we didn't have a lot of problems with her doing homeschool. Um, she was catching on fairly quick. They were having just a lot of fun. Uh, when she didn't want to do something, she was used to throwing a fit to get her away. So she, you know, of course got a lot of timeouts and stuff like that. But for the most part, um, this looks crazy on my eyes. But for the most part, she did really well. Um, we noticed that a lot of behaviors and things happened. When things would happen, her brother would be home. We did notice that somebody asked in my comments if she was different or if they were different when they weren't around each other. Very much. Very, very, very much. Um, it was almost like he set her off quite a bit. And I'm not sure why, because it wouldn't be like he would make her do things. She just acted completely different when he was around. Um, another thing that we noticed was every time they would go on visits, she would come back like she had forgotten everything that we had worked through. 
and they were going on visits every other weekend and um, every other holiday. But the little girl would act like she forgot everything. Like she, you know, everything that we would taught and like we would have behaviors under control. And you know, and you hear that a lot. You hear that a lot when you have kids um, going on visits. Unless you have a really strong um, co-parenting relationship, which I really do with my ex. Um, we have a really good co-parenting uh, relationship. You know, for instance, if the kid does something while on visit, obviously it's just a weekend. And if it's something big, like you can't get something under control that fast. So you would need the other parent to be like, nope, the punishment keeps going at my house because you're grounded a week. You need that co-parenting. Well, mom was not ever going to co-parent. She was now in the mode of... I want the kids to like me more so that they will say things and do things so that I get them back. So I'm continuing to get child support. Mind you, when my ex paid child support, he paid her almost a thousand a month. When we had the kids, she was only um, supposed to pay us a hundred and she didn't. So there was no, no money for quite a long time, quite a long time. There was no money. And when it was, it was a hundred dollars a month. I mean, it wasn't enough to take care of kids in any sense. So, I mean, literally it was me. It was me and my husband taking care of these kids. It was, it wasn't, not financially, it was not her. And obviously, she wasn't doing her part as a parent when she had these kids. Um, they were pretty much like, here's social media, here's TV. You know, there was not, let's spend time together type situation. Their time together was literally like playtime all the time it was just like you go play your video games and watch your tv i got stuff to do i mean and everything i'm saying guys is coming from the kids okay so i wasn't there and no i do not know i only know what the kids told me now do i think the kids were lying to me the whole time like they lie on me absolutely that comes into play quite a bit so if the kids did not get their homework done like in normal life um, if kids have school work during the week that they didn't get done at school the school sends it home and it's called homework well if they were going with their mom we would send it with her for her to do with the kids well she wouldn't do it with the kids so then on Sundays I was literally stuck doing school work until like 11 o'clock at night with these kids to get it done because it it was due you know it's due to be turned in on Monday and there's not a whole lot of grace time on that like when you're supposed to get it done you just freaking get it done well it wasn't getting done so then when that was brought up into court and they were talking about um, taking away weekend visits because the teachers were writing you know notes and stuff and they were complaining because there was a lot of times we could not get it done to turn it in. And it, and it also came, this looks really funny, it also came a point where I kind of gave up, you know, working on that stuff late at night because um, I'm tired too and I did not want to sit there and be doing schoolwork when she was supposed to do it. So, the teachers started complaining, their grades started dropping. And we discussed with the attorney what was going on. So there was discussion of visits were going to stop on the weekends if she couldn't keep up on their schooling and do what she was supposed to do on her part. There was other things in that as well, guys, not just that. So so then any so then when we would send the schoolwork, her and her mother would do the schoolwork instead. And so here I thought it was getting done. When they would get home, usually how this homeschool program works, because it's public homeschool, they they do stuff for a week, and then that Monday, they test out on the stuff that they worked on the week before. So we would go in to take the test, and they would not, like for instance, um, like something I would send home was like these pages to like, they had to study 
for a test that was coming up on Monday so they would study we would go take the test they would get a zero percent and I'm like how is that possible when on this assignment that you did this weekend you got a hundred percent well my mom did it or my grandma did it so then it was like how can we how can she as a parent sneak to still not do her job but do her job it was constantly like this guys so then I I was starting to work literally like on the road to drop them off for visits I would do the homework in the car or we would get it in right after school like sit down we're doing this it was like always a rush on my part schooling is very important to me with my kids and myself because um, you can't get a decent job without a good education and it's not just a high school diploma anymore you got to have more so it was constantly a fight with that well the little girl when we had her tested because she struggled in school a lot as it was she had a very low she has a very low IQ um, so that was going to be a little bit of a struggle as well and a lot of in a lot of the testing it stated she just doesn't put the effort in you know which I found too her and her brother would always try to find the shortcut to everything in life the shortcut instead of like remember the whole story of point a to point b they would always go a b c d e f g you know all the way through the alphabet until they got to where they needed to be that was a constant um it's very exhausting to do things that way so their brain is always like how can i find the shortcut well anyways um they would go on visits and when they would go on visits it was literally <laughs> the big joke was always that bio mom was the Disneyland mom because it was like here you can stay up all night you can eat whatever you want you can sleep wherever you want you know there's no rules there's no nothing you want to throw your wrappers on the floor that's fine and so <sighs> coming back from that was really hard Especially on the, well, on both kids, but we're talking mostly about the little girl. So that was hard on her because she already had a very low IQ and a hard time learning things as it was. And it just made things even more confusing, you know. This feels really fun, but this doesn't. So it's easier to gravitate toward what's fun. I mean, it's literally like that to this day. Oh, you just got out of the RTC treatment center? Because you tried to poison somebody, you stole money, um, and you beat up people really super bad and pulled a knife on somebody. Here's a phone. Here you go. Oh, you want social media? Here's social media. Not, let's work on your social skills because you don't know how to interact with people without bullying. It's just like, oh, here's a phone. Here's a computer. Here's, every, here's makeup. You want makeup? Here's, oh, you don't clean your face and your whole forehead and your chin is literally broke out. That's okay. It will scar, but I don't care because you'll be an adult. So here you go. There's just like no thinking process with them. It's how can I be the good mom? So living with taking care of people like that, you know, like that literally have no, don't know how to discipline because they're too busy trying to be the good guy is very hard. So with the girls, she would have constant anger outburst because she wanted that same life, but she also wanted safety. So she felt like she was having to, you know, compromise her safety for all this fun stuff. Even though at my house, she could have all that stuff, but it came with a price. It came with, you can't play video games until your schoolwork is done. You can't watch TV until your chores are done. You know, it's like normal life stuff, guys. And um, that concept was very hard. So they would watch my kids succeeding, um, getting their stuff done, you know, getting homework done, getting chores done, and being able to go play video games or being able to go watch TV. And they would be very hateful towards my kids, especially the little girl. So she was very jealous, still to this day, has always been and probably will always be super jealous. And actually the boy is too, it's really interesting. But they're super jealous over my oldest twin. She, my oldest twin, um, 
bless her beautiful little heart and we all wish we were this way but she doesn't have to really study to get good grades except for math we're not gonna talk about that she has you know she's a everything she's an a plus student math she's like I think she says she's between like an A and a B which she feels is bad I feel is amazing because I suck at math but she really doesn't have to work at school she's just one of those people that it comes really super easy for her where everybody else in life me included have to work extra hard to get good grades but not only that not only is she really good at school, she was just always a really good kid. Um, I never had really any problems with her. With, you know, if she got in trouble for something, I could tell her to go to her room. She would quietly go to her room, be on her 15 minute groundation or whatever it was for the age that she was. She would go and do that quietly and she would be done. And you know, when something, if she got something taken away, she does not ask for it back. And mom, having five kids at one time, I would forget that I took things. I would legitly find stuff that I took from her in my drawer like years later because she she, she does not ask for it back. She, she's just like, when my mom says I can have it back, I'll have it back. And I hate that because sometimes this mom's forget I hate being asked all the time about something but um I also hope like sometimes I hope like she's just like oh you didn't give this back to me um for instance she got her computer taken away like a year ago and we were talking about something the other day and she's like I still don't have that back and I was like Oh my God, did I forget to give that back to you? She's like, yeah, but it's not a big deal. Welcome to the shitty mom club. <laughs> but they would be so jealous of her that they would pin against her on a lot of things. And um, the little girl especially, she would um, attack her she would steal her things she would say mean things to her um it was like constant guys that she was just so jealous that she just thought that she just like always had to get something on her and that my oldest twin was always the center of hate with these two it was a constant thing guys um so when I say attack, I mean like ripping her hair out, scratching her, biting her. One time there was a fight in my house. So my niece was staying with me. It was December of this last year. In fact, this is the, the reason why one of the reasons why she's in trouble and she headed to jail and RTC and all of that stuff. This is one of many reasons, but um, she had taken something of my niece's and my niece was pissed. My niece is a year, actually the same age as my stepdaughter, one year um, or half a year older than my daughter. And they have gr all grown up together. Um, like, this isn't just <laughs> all clothes, all been together. It was my best friend's daughter, but we consider, I consider her my niece. You know, she was part of the family, and she was staying with me for the month of December, school break. And um, she stole something from her, and so my niece, who was not scared of either kid, either of my stepkids. <sighs> stupid camera. Anyways, so she went and took something of my stepdaughters she was like you steal from me then I take from you she had that mentality she went and took I think it was a pair of pants but I'm not really sure um, because I wasn't in on the mix of everything I knew that something was stolen 
by my st I knew my stepdaughter stole something. I can't remember if my niece found it or what went on. I just knew about the situation in brief of teenage girls screaming. So at this point, I have four teenage girls in my house. And they're screaming, which is not uncommon because, like I said, I had four teenage girls in my house. <laughs> so they're screaming, fights, you know, arguing, whatever. Um, I was taught a long time ago, you do not referee. You have to kind of let them figure things out until somebody is getting hurt. Or if somebody gets hurt. Um, then you have to intervene as a parent. But when they're just arguing and they're... I call it their stupid teenage bullcrap. Because they do it all the time. Um, you just let them kind of be... So they're arguing or whatever. Next thing I know, I hear my stepdaughter hollering. My niece is bigger, quite bigger. I wasn't concerned that she couldn't, you know, handle the stupid argument that they were having. Um, so my niece and my daughter were sharing a room at the time. My stepdaughter tried to go into this room into their into her bedroom and where my niece was also sleeping and my daughter was like no you get out of my room you're not allowed in my room she went in there and grabbed something of my niece's again and the fight was on um the fight was on I don't remember where I was at the time when the entire situation started. So I'm talking from like the kids talking to me of what happened, excuse me, at that part. Um, whatever since, my stepdaughter took off running out of the room with this item. My, um, my niece got her by the hair going out of the room and then grabbed a hold of it was pants grabbed a hold of the pants and they're fighting they're pulling and fighting over the pants guys so now they're in I come into the scene they're in the living room and they are tug of warring with these pants and I'm like what are you guys doing? No, she took this. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my God, you guys need to freaking stop. And then, um, she went to go, she, or my niece got the pants back. I thought the whole thing was done. I move on to other things. Guess my stepdaughter wasn't done. She goes running back into the room where my oldest twin was like pushing her out of the room. <clears throat> oh, good God. <clears throat> okay. Woo. So she starts shoving my daughter, I guess. When I come back into the scene, because I start hearing them scream and stuff. They were in the living room, guys, at this point. How they made it from the bedroom down the hallway into my living room i'm not really sure but i'm guessing they like rolled in a f this fight um of whatever item my stepdaughter was heading out of the room with my daughter had grabbed a hold of this item and they were arguing my daughter had gotten it back and my stepdaughter jumped on top of my daughter my daughter has really bad asthma and she jumped on top of my daughter my daughter was like get off me I can't breathe so get off me I can't breathe means let me sit on your arms and chest plug your nose with my hand and put my hand over your mouth and bite you all over your face and pinch and gouge you your nose and your mouth she had gouges in her eye. I mean, you guys seen the pictures if you're on my Facebook. Um, she, like, bit her and stuff. Well, my boyfriend had came in 
to the room about the time that I was coming in when this fight is going on. We came in from outside. And he's seen that and he like, he's seen her feet. That's all he said he's seen. He's seen her feet going up and down and seeing that my stepdaughter was literally trying to kill her. And he shoved off my stepdaughter and gets my daughter up and is like, breathe, 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 you know. And my stepdaughter kept trying to go after her. And my boyfriend's like, got the three stooges hand on his, on her forehead, like, back up. What are you doing? Knock it off. What is going on? And, um, then he's mad because my daughter can't breathe. Like, she's having an asthma attack. She can't breathe. So, he's got my daughter. And, um, everybody, when my daughter's kicking her feet on the floor, which makes a big noise, um, everybody comes running from every inch of the house while my niece, I came out of the bedroom and was now she's on the track of she wants to kick the crap out of my stepdaughter. She's pissed. So she, her thing, most of the time when kids fight, you know, kids fight guys, kids fight a lot. And there's things that are considered sibling fights. You know, they try to hurt each other, fight for rivalry, you know. I know me and my sister got it with blow dryers and hairbrushes and stuff. But when you deliberately plug somebody's nose in their mouth and bite them all over their face while you're holding them down, it's a little bit different. So it wasn't, so this is like the downfall The when we start getting close to when my stepdaughter did not live with me anymore. Um, we had a situation a few days later. She had been bullying my disabled child. The one that hates to get on camera, but I talked her into getting on camera on my, um, my head went blank. On my live, if you did not see it. I got her to come on camera. But, um, anyways... It was like not very long after the incident with my oldest, she was bullying my twin. She has been bullying my twin uh, for 11 years. Well, me and my twin had had a talk and she had told me that she bullies her and she threatens her life and she's scared of her and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I had told my disabled child, my beautiful youngest twin, I got crap all over me. I told her, I said, I don't want you to talk to her at all. That is now the new rule is if she tries to talk to you, you come and get me and I will facilitate any conversations, any things that go on, um, will go through me when it pertains to her because she was so scared of her. Um, she didn't want anything to do with her. Well, this particular day, my youngest twin told me that she has been stealing, you know, my stepdaughter has been stealing money out of your purse. She makes me keep watch. She's threatened my life if I don't keep watch. She's, you know, she's sneaking out at night. She's making me do this and this that pertains to that. And if I don't, she threatens my life. So I had known about, I had gotten this information and we had discussed this information with my stepdaughter who now is pissed because um, she's been told on. She's been outed and she didn't want to be outed. Um, so she is screaming at the moment. She was screaming at my youngest twin and calling her a, a liar and you're lying about me and you know, the typical things that rag kids do, deny, deny, deny. She is doing that to my daughter screaming in her face I get in between I'm like you need to go somewhere else you know this is the way this is gonna be we're trying to figure out what we are going to do with the situation of her stealing all of this money we are literally looking for the money going through the house she wouldn't tell us where the money was most of it we're talking a thousand dollars guys we're not talking little money we're talking big money I pulled money out to pay my bills and she had taken it so we're, we're looking for this money and stuff. Well, in the process of looking, um, my boyfriend is quite the little detective when he goes searching. 
he is finding trash bags and trash bags and trash bags full of fast food wrappers or convenience store wrappers um, down in her area. And he's finding lots of it. Then he finds a cooler that has stuff that hasn't been uh, ate yet, which is like liters of pop and and burritos from the convenience store and Oreo, just junk guys, just straight up no nutrition junk food. Where if we found a ton of it. Um, in that process, she decides to take my um, youngest twin, she throws her into the bathroom, shuts the door and locks it, and starts beating her. My disabled child, who has dwarfism and is literally half her size. She is the height of a five, six year old. She's tiny. So my boyfriend breaks the door open, gets her off. She had my daughter behind the door of the bathroom. Because when you when he got the door open, that was the wall that she was on was behind the door. So he's trying to pull them out from behind the door. It's a, we have very small bathrooms. He's trying to pull her out from behind the door. And she just keeps going back for more. And he gets her out of the bathroom and into the hallway. She literally, and he's trying to see if my youngest is okay. And she literally comes back into the bathroom to try to hurt her more. To try to shut her up. You know, if you are so innocent like they keep claiming... Why do you react to that then? Why do you react like that? You know, that's the question, the big question here. You keep attacking and going back for death. Like literally, she literally wanted to kill my daughter. Like she wanted to kill her. She was so mad and so upset that she got outed on her bull crap, stealing, sneaking out the whole biz that she wanted to kill her. So, I know you guys don't know a whole lot about uh, RAD or children with ODD or, you know, some of the more serious disorders. When they get outed on something, they instantly turn into the victim. Oh, I did this and I'm hurt. They, they try to find something to take your mind off of what happened. So they don't have to deal with their problems. So she runs outside. She goes um, to my backyard. She finds some broken glass. And she's squeezing it in her hand. My boyfriend goes and looks for her. I find out, you know, make sure that my kid is okay. And he finds her with the glass and she's squeezing it and crying. And then it becomes, oh, my poor hand. We have to deal with my hand and take time off of this. Me beating up. Now, now it becomes a, we're going to spend so much time dealing with this problem that I created. That you will forget or you're going to let it go or we're going to be so worried with this that it's not going to be so bad. Well, I learned from the many, many years. I'm like, well, here's some stuff that you can clean it up while we discuss this problem. Oh, God. You know, oh, God, we got to deal with this. Well, she didn't want to deal with it. Well, when she was outside throwing her little tissy, she broke the fence. That wooden, wooden fence privacy fence on that side of my house and she broke it and in the part of the discussion that we had had I told her you will be helping me fix that you will be you know whatever well that day was a doozy let me tell you that much so so we fix she fixes her little um, thing she did on her hand well, we discussed, you know, when I told you you're fixing that fence, you're grounded. Um, no exceptions. I'm done with this crap, you know, because it's everyday crap. She takes off outside. I get her inside. She starts raging. So when she rages, 
she everything remember I told you from point A to her room she destroys so she was doing that flips the pictures off the walls knocks chairs over throws knickknacks throws baskets throws whatever is in her path of destruction she destroys <coughs> excuse me what she was doing so I told her we're not doing that crap you just you know I'm done I'm just walking behind her at this point to make sure she is not going to destroy my house any more than they have already destroyed my house at this point and she starts hitting me yeah that's not gonna happen so I do a, I, know, I don't know if you guys know what a mat hold is. I was trained in mat holds, so I did a mat hold on her. It's like hands over yourself, you hug yourself type thing. And so she hugged herself, starts kicking her feet and throwing her head back. And we are on the couch, and she is kicking her feet and swinging and everything. And so I mat hold her. Um, I'm now on her lap. <laughs> And she is punching me in the back. So I'm just leaning forward, letting her just have at it. She's just getting, well, she starts pulling. My shoulder is really bad. I have a pulled bicep and my arm is out of socket. So I have to go in and get my arm put into socket all the time. Well, she starts pulling on my shoulder really bad. And I'm like this, like, knock it off. Like, you're, that's one thing I was like, you can punch me and hit me in the back of the head and hit me in the back or whatever else you want to do, but you're not going to pull my shoulder because that to me is the worst. Um, <laughs> such a rodeo with these kids like seriously you get your workout she calms down we go to fix the fence and uh, I'm talking to her dad on the phone and I'm explaining to him what he, she has did and so she's on the phone with him I won't let her have my phone. I have it on speaker because at this point I do not trust her to touch my phone because she's so violent and so angry and he's telling her you're going to do this and if you don't like it, you know, too bad. You live in my house and this is my rules and you know, the whole dad discussion. Um, she just gets up and is like, fine, I'll leave and off she goes. So he's like, did she really leave? I was like, yeah. He says, you call the cops on her as a runaway. Don't chase her. He's like, just call the cops. So I called the cops. And as you guys know, the cops do nothing for us. They bring her back to my house where she's raging and the cop has to tell her, because she keeps trying to get up and take off. And he says, you run. I'm tasing you. Just so you know. I am not chasing you. I will tase you. So you need to sit your ass down and do as I ask you to do. So now she's got this cop that's pissed. We actually got one of the good cops, guys. And he ain't playing any of her bullshit. Sit down. Shut up. Well, he is trying everything to help us. He has been trying this whole time to help us. Finding anything and everything to help us and he sees that she has scratches on her arms he knows that they're old but he's like hey let's get her on a suicide watch get her to the hospital she'll pull her you know psycho stuff there and they will commit her butt okay officer so that is what he did takes her to the hospital they call the uh counseling place they come up to do this um uh titled thing to see if she's competent or not they have her in the hospital they have an officer there she's in the the mental health room and the counselor comes out to talk to me and she's like asking me questions and that so <laughs> Let me back up a minute because now you're going to want to know about when I got poisoned. So there's so much talk about it. So much talk about it on TikTok. Like how could you not taste, you know, the pills or whatever. So then, so I was doing that gallon at a gallon water bottle. It was pink 
and I was doing the gallon of water a day challenge. Okay. Well, I suck at drinking water. Obviously I'm a pop drinker. Um, but I suck at drinking water like I'm supposed to. So I decided me and actually my oldest twin decided we were going to do this gallon of water challenge a day. Um, just to see if we could do it. I didn't like the taste of water because it's so meh. So <laughs> I was putting um, real lemon, it's called, into the water to make it easier. And I had drank half of it. And at the time I was working as a behavioral specialist. And um, I usually did my meetings in the evening. So I'd have to do so many meetings a month, so many phone calls a month, checking in all this stuff. So... I would do my meetings towards the evening when everybody got out of school and the family was home. So this particular family um, had their meetings, I think at like 5.30 or 5. I can't particularly remember, but it was out in the boonies. So I live in Wyoming. There's not very good cell service and things. And where this family was at, there was no cell service. So you always, as a social worker, need to keep yourself protected. For, uh, you just need to know that. Like you always need to keep yourself protected protected. So anyways, I had quite a bit of water left. So I was like, I don't want to drink this right before bed. Big mistake. So I chugged a whole bunch of it really quick. You know, probably like this much of it. I chugged really fast. My boyfriend is going to take me out there. He stays in the car, but he just drives me out there. It just in case anything happens, he is there. Okay. And this is way out of town in the sticks. So we go out there. I'm not feeling any sort of way yet. It takes us about 15 minutes to get there. Um, I get into the house and as soon as I get into the house, I feel very lightheaded. Like somebody shut off my ears. You know, like that plugged feeling. I felt that first. Um, then I started feeling like my eyes were crossing. Like I'm talking to them and I feel like everything's in turtle mode, like slow mode. And I was like, I am not feeling right. And so, um, I remember saying to the mom, like, wow, like my ears are really plugged and got a dizzy spell for a minute. Like I apologize because I'm sure I looked really funny. Then I pass out on their couch. Um, I was sitting on the edge of the couch and I passed out for a second and I'm feeling really bad now. And the mom is very concerned. She's like, oh my God, do I need to call an ambulance out here? You're like, what do I need to do? And I was like, I am fine. I am going to, I'm going to excuse myself and leave you. you have to, I mean, I'm trying to stay as professional as possible, you guys. This is very embarrassing. Like everybody has their own judgments on things. It was, I was very embarrassed because I didn't know what was going on and you know, I'm supposed to be professional and here I'm passing out and stuff and it looks very odd, I'm sure. I excuse myself very quickly. I go outside, get in the car. I, my boyfriend is like, wow, that was really quick because usually it's an hour. And um, I'm like, I do not feel good. Um, I passed out. I'm feeling really dizzy. I feel really bad. I can't catch my breath. Um, so he starts driving like a madman to the hospital. We make it to the hospital. Um, I start talking to um, the doctor who has now at this point, like taken blood, put an IV in, you know, they're, they're now asking me questions like, did you fall? Did you hit your head? Um, they're going through different things. Like, do you have any illnesses? You know, um, are you diabetic? You know, blah, blah, blah. They're asking me all these questions. And then it got to, did you, are you allergic to anything? And I was like, yeah, I'm allergic to bananas. Did you eat anything with bananas? No. Do you feel like your tongue swelling or do you have hives? No. Um, I said, I haven't ate anything for quite some time. Only thing I did was I drank a bunch of water. And he's like, um, water wouldn't do that to you. You know, there's, I'm like, it had real lemon in it. It's not, there's no additives. It's literally freeze dried lemon in a, in a little packet. It's real lemon. Um, I give my youngest one it, you know, and, uh, we start, I don't even know how we got on the subject, but my test results came back. So there was 
you know, he starts asking me about medicine that I'm taking and if I have any mental health conditions or anything because I'm guessing this medicine came back in my system. I don't really know because he doesn't really say that. But I'm like, I don't take any medicine ever. Zero. I haven't in 15 years. Very anti-medicine. Um, always have been anti-medicine. you know, medicine. So uh, he starts, he's like, you only had the water. Well, then um, we get more into this conversation. And uh, we find out that I had been, something had been put into something that I consumed, which the only thing I consumed was water in like five, six hours for this to go on. And it was like 15 minutes before all this went on. So we look, we come home, we look at my water bottle and it, you know, you look down in it and if you pull it to the side, it's pink. It's like a see-through pink um, color, uh, like iridescent or whatever. But you pull it to the side and we could see things floating in there, chunks of things floating in there, and quite a bit of chunks in there. Um, I had called the hospital and told the hospital, they told me to save the container. They were sending my blood work and things off to do a little more checking and stuff, but to save it. That's what we did. The next day, this big boom uh, with my stepdaughter had happened. So now we're in the hospital and she's in the room and um, they're evaluating her. They're coming and talking to me and they start asking me like, has there been any incidents that have happened? And so I explained to the counselor that she had stolen this money, um, that she had attacked my daughter and in the manner that she attacked my daughter and about the poisoning incident. I explained that there was stuff floating in my cup and that we were waiting for blood tests and stuff to figure out what was going on exactly. We knew stuff was in my system, but to know, I mean, it's for them to really do stuff at the hospital to find out what was in your system. It's like pretty much you have to die before they do those kind of tests and stuff, guys. So, um, I'm talking to this counselor lady and she's like, did you report this stuff? And I was like, why? Nobody does anything. She's like, what do you mean nobody does anything? And I said, you know, so I, I literally sitting with this counselor, I go through what I have been through with my stepkids for the first time with somebody who is willing to listen. And um, she's sitting there and she's listening to me and she was like, she gets up from the desk and she comes out um, she goes out into the hallway where there was an officer standing at watch and um, she says this is no longer this is no longer a suicide hold this is a homicide hold um, which is a different protocol that they do now somebody goes into the room to sit um, First, they pulled out my stepdaughter into the hallway and um, they pat her down. They find a wad of money in her pocket, which happens to be some of the money that she had stolen from me. He asked her, where did you get this big amount of money? And she was like, at first she was trying the whole, I don't know, it's mine. And then um, he's like, where did you get it? This is quite a bit of money for somebody so young to have. And she's like, I stole it from my stepmom. So then, um, he pats her down, takes her shoes, um, her shoes, coat and anything else he had brought out from the room and he put it into, onto a tray. He goes through all of the pockets and stuff. And, um, he then proceeds to ask her about um, the attack on my daughter, and she admits to doing that. And he asked her what her plan was, and she said to effing kill her. Then he asked her about um, if there was anything put in my water, and she denied it. 
And then he continued to ask other questions where she admitted to putting her medication into my water bottle. Um, so they put her back in the room on a homicide, he handcuffs her, puts her back into the room on a homicide hold. Me and the counselor go into, back into the small room where she was drilling me on questions and stuff. And um, she calls the district attorney and tells the district attorney that they need to transport her to Juvie Hall. Um, and they tell her they do not have Juvie Hall hold in our area anymore. It is now two hours away. He asks, I mean, this is nighttime, guys, that this is going on. He asks what is going on. She explains to him that she has somebody on a homicide hold, explains to him why, and that she had admitted to the things that she is being held for. And so he states that she needs to be um, arrested and sent to the jail. So cops come, they tell her pretty much her rights or whatever, I don't really know because I wasn't in the hallway. Um, and they put her in the back of the cop car and they took her to adult jail. And the counselor put her on a no sight, no sound in the room. Homicide watch. Homicide and then for the first 40 hours, suicide watch. Um, they took, I guess, all of her clothes and gave her a wearable blanket. She was not allowed to have a bed. She had to sleep on the floor. They blocked all of the sight and sound. In her room, she was not allowed to have any items because now she's on homicide watch because she tried to kill somebody twice. And she sat there for about a month. Um, while they were looking, they were in the process of looking for some t sort of mental facility to take her and they could not find any. So... It goes on for like two weeks. Me and the counselors, um, district attorneys, everybody is calling all of these facilities. Excuse me. All in Wyoming and then all of the surrounding states. Nobody will take her. Um, her first evaluation for PTRF was denied to take her because she was too violent. A month later, um, they got her on the counselors and stuff that were going to the jail to see her and psychiatrists and stuff got her meds situation situated with her and they did another evaluation where the PTRF would take her and they shipped her to the PTRF where she sat um, to get stable so they could find now their thing was to find an RTC for her to go to. The interesting part is I'm the one that got the PTRF for her and I'm the one that got the RTC for her. Um, me who is nobody, not her POS bio mom who did nothing, literally she did nothing but deny, deny, deny and everything to get her out of it. You don't think your child needs help. Help your child. Um, her dad did not do very much. Um, I very often like to make excuses for him, but he didn't do a whole lot. Um, I called all day long, every single day, and then waited for callbacks and stuff from people filled out things would have, um, my husband come and sign papers so that they could release records so they could see if they would take her. I mean, this was an ongoing thing, but we ended up getting people to take her and she ended up going to the next facility where she is now or just got out of. Um, she now has social media as of yesterday. I got the memo from family. The family told me she is out and she is on social media so I could go and block her. I am thankful for that. Um, they think that they have this solid army of people, but really it's just, they all are backbiting each other. It is c total and complete chaos with this family on a constant. Um, a lot of people asked about her pinching my baby when she was a newborn. Um, she did that quite often. 
and I didn't catch on to it because when I would go, like, I would lay my baby down on the floor. The living room is right here, guys, like, right outside my door. And so I would, my baby would be playing on the floor. I'd come just right in here to the bathroom. And then I'd hear her cry. And, you know, everybody loved my youngest. Everybody loves my youngest. I shouldn't say loved. Loves my youngest. And I never seen any aggression or anything towards her. Everybody had nothing but love. My stepdaughter was very jealous of my youngest. She's very jealous of my oldest, but very jealous of the youngest because she was getting held and breastfed and all this attention and stuff too. And she wanted it for herself. I mean, that is what she ended up telling me. Um... She one time I was sitting in a recliner and my youngest was standing up, barely standing, but she was, you know, she was just learning how to pull herself up and she's standing on the edge of the chair and my stepdaughter was throwing one of her many millions tissy fits and I told her just go to your room until you're done. Go to your room until you're done throwing a tissy fit and she picked up, I was folding laundry you know, and I had the basket like right here and my daughter, my youngest was right here standing and I'm folding laundry and putting it into this basket. And my stepdaughter picks the basket up and slams it down on top of my baby. Um, I get so much judgment of why I stayed or um, these aren't your kids. Screw bio mom, screw bio dad. Yeet the kid. I get that a lot. I get a lot of judgment on why I stayed. Um, I knew two weeks before I married my husband that he cheated on me. We had just gotten his kids. Um, I was dumb like the rest of the world of all they need is love and attention. I thought that. Um, that is not even remotely true. All they need is for somebody to pay their bills while they let them do whatever the hell they want to do. That is the only time that they are happy. So honestly, if I would have known then what I know now, being with bio mom would have been the best bet all the way through because she don't give a crap. She lets them run and she is an enabler of their bull crap. And, um, they would tell me some horrendous things, you know, about eating out of the dumpster to survive and um, being taken to babysitters that would molest the little girl and all of these guys in and out of their life, you know, being left alone, being hit with items from grandma and her, you know, shoes and sticks and, and all of this stuff. And we got so many stories, you know from the kids and so it's like I just I just I just drop stuff I just wanted to protect them love them and give them a good life and what people don't understand is I got zero benefit zero I didn't get child support from mom I didn't get child support from dad I didn't get help from either one of them um, I didn't get all this in the endless love and attention and affection from the kids. Um, I had bio mom stalking me day and night, stalking my social media, you know, um, writing people I hung out with. <coughs> Constantly being harassed. Um. You guys, I had, I felt like the whole town was against me because I wasn't speaking out about what was going on as loud as I'm speaking out now. And so everybody was believing this poor, innocent bio mom and her kids got taken away by this evil stepmom who is beating and abusing and doing all this horrible stuff to these kids. And, um, I got villain, I became the villain and, um. A villain in a story where I got no benefit. No benefit for keeping them. I had nothing. There was zero. Um, bio mom has told her kids now that they're coming, they're um, being court ordered back 
to her, thank God. Um, she's telling them that I got child support and stuff from her. No, I didn't. Um, if there was any child support at all going on, then that went with stepdad or went with bio dad. Not with me. I didn't get anything. Um, I didn't even have a child support card to get anything. Um, the I, I don't mean to be rude or judgmental in any way, but what do you think a hundred dollars is really gonna buy? <laughs> hundred dollars for two kids, not hundred dollars each. Hundred dollars for two kids. Wow, like. What are we buying here? An outfit for a kid? Because it's not it's not benefiting me in any ways. hundred dollars is is nothing to raising kids, you know. Um, she didn't pay for insurance. She didn't pay for copays. She didn't pay for jack freaking squat. And if she ended up paying for anything, it wasn't to me. Um, that's like an interesting thing that my stepkids now like to throw in my face is um, I'm doing YouTube because their mom is no longer paying me. No, you're paying the state because your kids in state custody retard. No, <laughs> no. Um, they're not paying. She's like, I don't even know. Like the the other things that she says, you know, like she's just mad because I'm not paying her child support no more. No, I'm not getting your hundred dollars anymore. Never got it to begin with. And you're not paying it to us, you're paying it to the state because your kids are in state custody, honey. Like your perfect lifestyle is not so perfect. At least when they were with us, they weren't in state custody. With you, they're in state custody and they have to have all these people investigate and watch things that are going on. I don't have that here. My kids don't have to go through any of that, guys. They don't have to go through all the stuff that you guys have to go through. We have to just go through healing from your ultimate mental psychosis that you guys live in. Um, if there was a dictionary... <sighs> picture of habitual liar the three of you would be lined up you would it's very interesting that they come and watch my videos it's very interesting that my stepson has put my videos into his playlist on his page interesting right um we're still being stalked um his friends have came and told me or my daughter, you know, stuff about, you know, saving things on his playlist. I guess about this video he made. I never seen the video. Um, I have you blocked and I have no interest in coming and watching your pity. Um, I seen the one video and that was enough for me. I see you have not gotten help and that's very sad. And I pray that you get help and that your sister gets help. Um... But I no longer have to deal with that because I get to uh, enjoy my my four kids and my two grandbabies. I get to enjoy my mother and my boyfriend. I get to enjoy a clean house. I get to enjoy um, us remodeling everything. Everybody's gotten you know new bedrooms and um, new flooring and and uh, it's funny how things happen. You know, like you get out the bad. And different things start changing in your life. Um, I don't get migraines anymore. That's one of the things. I used to have a migraine at least, you know, two times a week. I don't get migraines anymore. That's one of the things that actually went away. I have not had um, any of my severe dizzy spells I used to get since they left my house. I have not had any of those severe passing out and dizzy spells and stuff. Probably because I'm not being poisoned anymore. Oh, that's the thing with my water bottle. So the cops took my water bottle. They came to my house at like 1 o'clock in the morning. But anyways, they took my water bottle, put it into protective bag and stuff, and they have it put away. They are waiting for my stepdaughter to get out of the mental institute. Because when you're in the mental institution, they cannot prosecute you for anything. They have to wait until you get out. 
So we are waiting for her to get out, which I think she is. So now we get to move forward with prosecuting her, which means the water bottle will then be sent off if it hasn't already been sent off to the lab. Um, the counselor had me get her pills out and count them in front of her. And there were, um, I want to say 18 of her bipolar meds missing, which they think is in the bottom of my water bottle. Um, when she was asked about it, that was the med that she used to poison me, supposedly. Um, they are going to figure that out when they test it or if they already have tested it. We are waiting for, like I said, my stepdaughter to get out of that mental institution because um, then she is of sound mind to be prosecuted. So she'll be prosecuted for trying to stab somebody um, in the foster home. She will be prosecuted for trying to smother my daughter. She will be prosecuted for the money she stole. And she will be prosecuted for um, poisoning me. Um, we are also pushing forward the conviction of my stepson. So he got into trouble for severely beating up his biological sister. So he was on probation. I'm pushing now for him to um, be convicted of offending my daughter and it was on camera so it should be easier to convict my him for my daughter's thing because with his biological sister there was no proof with mine there is proof so my daughter recorded it um i find that it's really funny because these kids are the victims of everything so they prosecute things when it pertains to them getting hurt but when it came to my kids getting hurt everything's just kind of sat um, my stepson has admitted to his principal that he stole the money out of my purse. He has also admitted, admitted it on a uh, camera on video. So we will be prosecuting for the money he stole out of my, my purse. It was not the $45 or whatever that he's claiming. It was almost $800 that he ended up stealing two different times. So it was one day and then the next day that he has stole. The first day he stole $500 supposedly um, and then sold the rest the next day and he stuck it all into a vending machine so we are still working on that and I feel oh we have stuff going on with the state for protection orders and stocking orders and things like that um, they feel because I am making these videos and I'm doing things that I'm attacking them but really I'm not so I have a right to heal my kids have a right to heal and we have a right to tell our story I feel like more people need to know about ODD and um, personality disorders and reactive attachment disorders there is so many women out there and men and men that feel alone feel like nobody is helping them feeling like cops don't believe them counselors don't believe them because here these kids act a certain way at home and they go to counseling or they go to school and they're little angels they're smart um, somebody asked me to talk about the honeymoon period. They can honeymoon for six months. They can honeymoon up to a year. Up to a year, guys. Um, it's sloppy from six months on. They have a lot of holes and loops and stuff where they get busted with things. But they can straight honeymoon for like six months. They can get people to believe that they are the victim of somebody else. And that is the scary part. So if you are going through this, I will say this again journal so if you don't know what to journal whatever there is um journal pages on my etsy store download the f digital file and it's seven days a week journal have them journal and you journal things always keep a journal two get cameras get cameras in your house put them up it is worth it put alarms on doors know when they are coming and going if you have that issue of them getting into things or looming in the night um, every incident needs a call to your police or sheriff department even if they can't do anything you say this every single time I want a report made say those words every time I want a report made then when you have a stack like this you take that stuff and you drop it in somebody's lap district attorney's lap CPS's lap a lawyer's lap um, counselors psychiatrists drop it in their lap this is how often this is going on. I am calling, here is my journal pages. Here is his journal pages. This is what's going on. Help me. Help me. Do not sit alone, you guys. 
like sitting here right now I look at the bathroom that's right there I have a tiny tiny bathroom not real tiny but tiny um, I hid out in that bathroom all the time guys I used to sit in the tub um, and cry to get my peace you know stupid thing stupid camera anyways um document document don't stop fighting don't stop talking if I can teach you anything don't hold it in I held it in for way too long um, I should have been speaking out and doing things um, while they were here doing these type of videos um, <laughs> making somebody listen to me but for now this is my story and uh, right now we're pretty happy it's quiet it's quiet um, I love the quiet I love getting up in the morning and hearing my three kids say good morning mom how did you sleep I ask them every morning good morning how did you sleep and they have big smiles every day now um, they're way happier way content um, I know you guys don't like <laughs> my ex-husband but he is doing great guys like even I mean he's got his own things he's battling with but um, he called yesterday and he uh, he's always you know asking like how the kids are doing and talks to the kids and he was gonna come over yesterday but we happened to we had went somewhere and uh, he works out of town so we had missed him but uh, he sees the changes in his kids um, he has wrote them off his uh, other two he has wrote them off completely if they're going to tell people that he was in and out of their life and he did all this bad stuff and you know good he says good then they can just stay away and he just focuses his time and his money and his heart on my three they're the other two are missing out um the last time he had came and visit the kids um Things are so much different now, but he come and visit the kids and he handed all of them a hundred dollar bill and said he was taking them shopping and that's his thing right now is he gives them a hundred dollars each one of them and he goes and he takes them shopping and um, that was stuff he wasn't able to do before because the other two took so much of our time, so much of our money, so much of our sanity that we weren't able to do these big things for our kids and <clears throat> my ex is on a track of trying to um, say his sorries to these three in any way that he can and he does it with me too I mean for Christmas <laughs> he ordered me you know a heart necklace that has three it hangs on my mirror it has three footprints and it has my three kids in it and he said the one that has my kids in it that I had made for you throw away be done with it and move on so there is good that is coming out you guys and will continue but for now I gotta go I got things to do today so I will see you tomorrow have a good day guys and remember put more good into the world than what you take out be nice in the comment section be nice to everybody bye now